Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to continue our study on single entry and incomplete records. And then we are going to look at the conversion method. In our previous video, we looked at the net worth method. But in this video, we are going to look at the conversion method. What did I say about the conversion method? I said that the conversion method is the method that allows you to prepare income statements and the statement of financial position. Because even though the entity is uh, maintaining incomplete records or single, using the single entry system, the information they have provided you is enough to prepare the income statement and the statement of financial position. And therefore, we have to prepare the income statement. In the net worth method, we couldn't prepare the income statement because we couldn't find any figure for sales. We didn't find any figure for purchases and all that. Over here, we are going to be able to establish our figures for sales and purchases. And therefore, we can be able to prepare the income statement as well as the statement of financial position. Okay, so that is how the conversion method is all about. But just take note that there are some steps that I'm going to give you to follow to make the work easier for you. I know this topic is a headache for a lot of students, especially the conversion method. And therefore, I want to take you through some step-by-step -step procedure that will help you to be able to solve any question on single entry and incomplete records under this method. And I'm sure that by the time I finish with you, you would be able to understand it perfectly. Okay, so now let's take note. If you get any question on single entry, these are the steps you should follow. In order to be able to solve and arrive at your profit the first thing you should do is to establish your figure for sales so establish the sales figure that you are going to use for the income statement remember that i told you that we need to prepare an income statement but you are not going to be given a trial balance like the in the case of a sole trader where they give you a trial balance to prepare no over here they assume that even though it's a sole trader or any other business organization the person did not keep proper records and so you have to find your own means of establishing the sales figure that is the first step how do you establish the sales now the sales figure is supposed to be your cash sales plus the credit sales so it means that in this question it may be or most likely to be that there will be a cash sales figure different from a credit sales you need to combine them to get a total sales figure. Then again, the cash sales figure is usually given to you in the question. And so they are going to give you the cash sales figure. But when it comes to the credit sales, it will not be given to you. Most of the time, you may need to do some workings to find the credit sales. And therefore, to find the credit sales, you may need to prepare a debtors control account or sales ledger control account in order to arrive at the credit sales and when you get your credit sales from the debtors control account then you can come and add that to your car sales if any to arrive at your total sales take notes very carefully i am saying that the main thing to do is to establish your sales that is the total sales but you should bear in mind that your total sales figure is a combination of car sales and credit sales the car sales may be given to you most of the time. Or some questions may not even give car sales at all. If you have a question where there is no car sales, whatever amount you arrive at for credit sales, you take it as a total sales because there is no car sales. But my focus is how to establish these credit sales. You would need to prepare a control account. And therefore, you need to apply your knowledge of control account here. How do we establish that? We are going to prepare control account. And when we prepare the control account, we know that credit sales is on the debit side of the debtor's control account. And when we prepare the control account, the difference will be caused. So let me just give you an example. So let us assume that this is a control account. So debtor's control account or sales ledger control account. We are going to do this as workings. Now, what the question normally does is that it's going to give you an opening the test just like we did for the net worth method there will be opening balances and there will be closing balances so you are going to see an opening balance for debtors or receivables sorry and there will be a closing balance for receivables 
And so we need to put them here. This is a debtor's account. And so it has a debit balance. So you bring your opening balance here, and then you bring your closing balance here as well. I'm teaching you how to arrive at the credit sales. So once you put your opening balance and the balance carry down, the opening balance that they will give you will be your balance brought down. The closing balance they will give you for the receivables or debtors will be your closing balance. And then you go through the question. You know how to prepare debtors control account from my previous videos. If you don't know how to prepare, refer to that and then go and master that and come back and watch. Now listen, you know how to prepare debtors control account. Debtors control account, you know that there are some things that will be credited to the debtors control account and there are some things that will be debited. So go through the question that they have given you. If there is anything, if there is anything that needs to be in the debtors control account, bring it. That is how you go about the workings. And so if you see returns out uh, inwards, you know returns inwards will be here. I'm not saying it will be in every question, but I told you that you just go through the question. If there is return inwards or any other thing, so if you see bad debt, for example, it will come. Any other thing, so you just, I'm just not specifically writing everything, but I just want you to understand that any item that will appear in the debtors control account, just bring all of them. When you are done, you add that up and attempt to balance off the account. When you are balancing off the account, you will see that the credit side will be greater than the debit side. You already have a closing balance, so you can't call it balance carry down again. So the difference that you are going to get, you put the difference here, and then you call it credit sales. Because we know from the knowledge of control accounts that credit sales are debited to the debtors control account but you are now looking for the credit sales so you put in everything and when you find a difference the difference must always appear on the debit side you call it credit sales this is how you arrive at the credit sales and then if there is any car sales you add it to get the sales figure that should be the first step to solving any question on single entry link and incomplete record under the conversion method i'm sure i've made a lot of sense to you all right, so the next step after establishing your total sales figure, because we need to prepare income statement, we need sales, and we need the purchases as well. So the next step is to establish your total purchases figure. Now, just like the first step, total purchases figure is your cash purchases plus any credit purchases just like this way we found our sales figure and so to find your total purchases you need your cash purchases plus the credit purchases in the same way cash purchases is always given to you in the question or may not even be there at all but the main headache is with this the credit purchases just like we have to prepare a debtors control account to, to find all the sales ledger contract account to find the credit purchases you need to also prepare a creditors control account or purchases ledger contract account to find your credit purchases and so you need your knowledge of creditors control account here again so let us assume that this is our creditors control account that we are preparing so we are going to use the information that we have from the question to prepare our creditors control account to get a creditors control account like i told you go through the question every item or balance that is going to the normal creditors control account just do it what you are doing is you are preparing a control account so just go through the question it could be in the uh, bank uh, or cash book or bank statement they will give you it could be in the list of balances it could be in the additional information you just go through you know the things that should be in a creditors control account the moment you are reading and you come across them, just lift them and bring them. As easy as ABC. And so, first of all, you need your balance carried down and your balance brought down. A balance brought forward and the balance carried forward. That will be the opening creditors balance or the payables balance. And then the closing balance for trade payables or creditors. And we know that the creditors has credit balance. So your opening balance brought forward will be here. And then you go and pick the closing balance and call it balance carried down. Then you start, just like we did for the debtors control account, you pick those items that should appear in a creditors control account and you bring them. So we know that there could be returns inwards. If you see that, you bring that. 
you can even see um, noting charges and all that. You could also see cash paid to creditors. So cash paid. Over here, I didn't bring cash received, but it could be here. Okay, cash received from debtors could be here, if there was any. I'm just bringing the most common ones. Okay, so cash paid could be here as well to creditors. And then you go through and pick all the things that will affect. It could be discount received or any other balance. In the same way, discount allowed could have affected the debtors. So once you have brought anything, it depends on your question. These items will not be the same with every question. But it depends on the question that you are solving. So if you are able to bring everything that concerns creditors' control account, then you close it off. Just like we did for the debtors. Then when you add up, the difference must appear on the credit side. There is no way your difference must appear on the debit. No. Just like we did for the debtors' control account. So the difference will appear here on the debit and we call it credit purchases. So the credit purchases and the credit sales will always be the difference. So having been able to establish the sales and then the purchases figure, the next thing you should focus on is establishing your figure for all your income and your other expenses. So we are going to look at how to establish the figures for income and expenses. Now take note that sales and purchases are all on the income statement. And therefore we are going to make sure that we've been able to establish all the figures on the income statement that are possible to establish. Okay, so we, we are going to look at our expense account. Now we are going to look at the expense accounts to establish your expenses. And we are going to use the principle of accruals and prepayment for both the expense account and the other income accounts. Now listen, the purpose for preparing the income account and the expense account is to ascertain the expense figure or value to go to the income statement and also the other income values using the principles of accruals and prepayment. So you are going to prepare the accounts. It depends on the expense. It could be rent, it could be salaries, any other expense. We are going to use the same format for that. So what I'm going to do now is to give you the format for the expense account using the principle of accruals and prepayment. And then when we have an expense that is not straightforward, that we need to go through that process. There is always a need. Even if there are 10 expenses, you need to prepare accounts for all the 10 before you'll be able to establish each um, amount to take to the profit and loss account or income statement for expense. And therefore, I'm going to prepare the expense account here. Okay, now listen. Like I was saying, if there is an expense that is paid in the cash book, but there are no accruals, there are no prepayments in that, then it means that you are not going to need to prepare this. You can take the figure straight away as expense paid will be expense incurred. Now, the reason for doing this is that, <clears throat> remember that the accrual concept says that expenses are to be taken to the profit or loss account or income statement as they are incurred and not when cash is paid necessarily. So we need the expense incurred, not the expense paid. And expense incurred is what should be in a profit and loss account. And therefore, we are going to begin. Now, there will be a, an opening balance. There is likely to be an opening balance for prepayment and an opening balance for owings or accrual for the expense account. Now, what we have to do is that the opening balance for prepayment will come on the debit side. So there will be balance brought forward for prepaid. The reason why it is coming on the debit side is that, in principle, it is an asset. That is the only way maybe I will say to let you remember or to make you understand, even though that is another principle that you can look at it from. Okay, because most of the time, a lot of students have challenges telling whether the prepayment should begin at the debit side or at the credit side. When it comes to expenses, prepayments brought forward should begin on the debit side to show that it's an asset. Then it means that the balance brought forward for owings, expense owings should come on the credit side. So it means that we are going to bring the prepayment at the beginning for the expense at the debit. And if there is any owing for that expense in the question, 
from the beginning to come to the end. And that means that the closing balances will be interchanged. And so if the opening balance for prepayment is on the debit, definitely the closing balance should come to the credit. So let me leave a space in the middle for that. So I'll say balance carry down for the prepayment or prepaid expense will be on the credit. And that means that the balance carry down for owings will also be on the debit. Now, when this happens, then the only thing you need to do, you know, normally the question should give you a receipt and payment account or a cash book. The question should give you a cash book or a receipt and payment account where there are receipts and payment. And in there, you move there to check whether that expense was paid within the year. The payment will obviously be on the credit side of the cash book. And because it is on the credit side of the cash book, it will now, the corresponding entry will appear on the debit side of the expense account. And therefore, you call it the cash book or receipt and payment, whatever way the question will put it. And that amount will be on the debit. And when you are done with this, you will just have to sum up like this and then find the totals. So once you find the total, you realize that the debit side will be greater than the credit side. Okay, you are trying to balance off the account. And so the difference that you are going to get when you subtract the total of the credit from the debit, the difference will not be called balance carry down. The reason being that you have already called this a balance carry down for the ending prepayment year. And there's another balance carry down. So the difference will be called income statement or profit and loss. Meaning that that is the difference you are looking for. And this figure, the difference you have gotten here, is the figure that will be taken to the income statement for that particular expense, being it rent, salaries, or whichever. And so, now, so it means that anytime you get a question that has an expense with either opening or closing prepayment or accruals or any of them, it's not necessary or it's not necessarily the case that all the time, it's not necessarily the case that all the time you would have all four of them concerning the accruals and the prepayment. You could have just one, just the opening prepayment, and there will be nothing else. Even the closing may not be there. You could have the opening and the closing for prepayment. There will be nothing for the owings or accruals. You could have for the owings just the closing, not the opening. Any of them at all can appear. What you need to do now is to master this format. And once you are able to arrange them, the difference should always give you the amount to be taken to the income statement, which I have called profit and loss over here. That is the difference. And the difference for the expense account should always appear on the credit side because it is an expense. If you, it is going to the debit using the T format. So what I'm trying to say is that if you solve the expense account and your difference appears on your debit, you are doing something that is not right. So please check it again. So this is how the expense account is going to look like. The same thing is going to be done for the income as well, which is usually not the case. You don't usually get income accounts in there with accruals and prepayment. However, it is also likely and it's a possibility. And so I must give you the format for the income account as well. So... The income account will be the opposite of the expense account. And therefore, it means that the opening prepaid rather will be on the credit side and the opening owings will now be on the debit side. There is an opposite relationship between the income and expense. And therefore, I'm going to have my balance brought forward, which is an owing or an accrual. It's going to be debited. And then the balance brought forward for prepayment for the income item will also be on the credit side and that means the opposite will also be true so to make it very simple for you just like i did here all the time once you enter the opening balance cross and enter the closing balances as well leaving a space in between for the cash paid or received and then the difference that is moving to the income statement and therefore i will come and write the balance carry down this time it will be for the prepayment because it's coming at the opposite side and then the owings or the accrued income balance carried down for that will also be on the credit side and then when we are done 
will go to the cash book or the receipts and payment account that we were given. You realize that there is an income item that may have been received. If there is nothing, fine. But there should be. If it is, it will be on the debit side. Because cash received, income, when it's being received in cash, to be debited to the cash book. And once it is at the debit, it means the corresponding entry will be on the credit side. Here. For cash book. Or for bank or for any other account. Whether it's receipt and payment bank account. Will be on the credit. That means that we can now find the total and find the difference. The difference will definitely appear on the debit. And then we call it profit and loss. Or we can even call it income statement. Meaning that it is this figure here that is going to be taken to the income statement for that particular income item. It could be investment income, it could be rent income, any other income. Once you have a cross and prepayment in the question for that particular income, this is how you are going to prepare account for it. Now, take note. This is not a general expense account and a general income account that you do for all at once. No. Even if you have 10 expenses that are having different items of accrual and prepayment you have to prepare 10 different accounts as workings for the expense and that is the same thing you are going to do for if there are more than one income items and i am using just expense account and income account as a heading but when you are preparing the account remember to use the right title if it is rent it is rent account if it is salary it will be salaries account that is how it's going to be i just want you to appreciate the format learn it well and then you are going to apply it in the any question that you see and then we are even going to use it to solve a question all right so that is it so once you are done with establishing your total sales figure you establish your total purchases figure then you think about your other income and expenses you prepare these accounts to establish the various expense items and the various income items so sometimes you will see that this question is very demanding especially because of these two because you may have to prepare about three four or five of them before you can even start your main work and that makes your workings a little bulky but it is not difficult it is the principle that you have to grab it is the understanding once you follow these four steps you are done with the income statement and then you can move but remember that there could be any other workings like depreciation and other things that you should take note of which i'm going to mention for you as we move on for example sometimes depreciation may not even come as a percentage for you to calculate they will give you opening balance of the asset and the closing balance of the asset you'd realize that there was no additional purchases of that asset but the closing balance of that asset has gone down so let's say your opening balance is ten thousand for motor vehicle at the end of the year the balance for motor vehicle is eight thousand you will see that it has declined by two thousand the question may be silent on it but they are expecting you to know that the decline of two thousand is depreciation so you have to use that in your income statement as well so there are a lot of tricky things that you have to know and understand from the format but whatever it is these are the basic four for the income statement and then finally the fifth step is to prepare the statement of affairs so let me just add that as well Having exhausted the income statement adjustments, you have to look at the statement of financial position to know if there are, there are any adjustments also to do. And what I would say, the main adjustment for the statement of financial position is to prepare a statement of affairs. Remember that I've already given the format for the statement of affairs in the part one of this video. And so you can still go back and look at how to prepare the statement of affairs. But the only thing that is important that I want to mention here is that over here, we are going to prepare the opening statement of affairs. Take note, not the closing, the opening only. And it is the opening only because we need the opening capital for the statement of financial position. When we are preparing the statement of financial position, we are going to use only closing balances from the asset values, the liability values, everything that we are going to use to prepare the statement of financial position will be at the end of the year, the closing balances, with the exception of the capital. It is only the capital that we are going to use the opening capital. Take note. If you pick the closing capital for your statement of financial position, you are wrong. You'll be making a mistake because it is the opening capital that we are going to adjust net profit and then the drawings on. And the resultant figure is assumed to be the closing capital. And so for the capital, we need the opening capital. And therefore, we are going to prepare the opening statement of affairs to ascertain the opening capital because they may not give you a capital in the question straightforward, but they will give you a list of assets and liabilities at the beginning of the year, which you will use to prepare your opening statement of affairs to ascertain your opening capital for the statement of financial position. 
there could be any other adjustment on the statement of financial position for example you can get a cash book which is not balanced you may need to re calculate uh, re prepare the account and balance the cash book in order to get your closing cash balances all right so these are some of the things you should know apart from the obvious five any other working will be subjective and will be dependent on the question how it's going to be done so we will still need to apply some other principles of accounting that we know but once we are mastering this or we are masters of this i'm sure that there is no question on single entry that we cannot pass because once we are once we're able to establish all these things even if we forget one or two um adjustments and we go on to solve the question we may be making 80 percent of the marks it's very very important and so let us note this very key five adjustment for the conversion method of income statement and so the next thing that we are going to do is to solve a question we are going to solve a question for the conversion method okay so this brings us to the end of the conversion method uh, explanations in our next video which is the part three of this series i'm going to take a question and then we are going to solve the question together and i'm sure that when we are able to solve the question together, your understanding will be complete as far as the conversion method is concerned. Remember to subscribe to this channel. Invite others to also have a benefit. Let us be successful together. And I'm sure that everyone will be okay with the academic work. Until we meet again next time, it is bye for now.